see is grace. All I see is grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus. The love of the Father. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Abiding with us all the days of our lives and forever. Shalom everybody. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming to you again with the Word of God that is able to change and transform our lives. Today I want to begin a, a series that is going to help us unlock our lives to be of more influence and to be more productive in this world. I'm going to begin to talk about the 12 powers of man. These are 12 abilities that are God-given within the soul of man. And the reason why I'm going to teach about this is so that we are able to understand how to cooperate with what we carry so that we can establish the will of God in our lives. And uh, this subject is very important because it's going to take you from one level to another. It is of great importance to us in our walk of faith that we discover who we are. We identify ourselves. And God wants you to know who you are. And that's why he is emphasizing on the scriptures on who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, the enemy is going to take advantage of that and is going to make you behave like the person that you are not. And remember, one of the greatest things that we are fighting is ignorance. No wonder the Bible says that my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. You have to have the right information. The right information will give you right thinking and then you'll have right talking and then you'll be able to have the right action which will bring your life into the course of production, multiplication, and even dominion. So we want to begin by understanding the significance of the number 12. We want to see from the scriptures what are the importance of this number. Remember from the scriptures, there is a book called the Book of Numbers. So numbers have very important aspect in our lives. When you look at how God created the world, there is a reason on why he created a certain thing on a certain day. It tells you on the first day, this is what he created. On the second day, this is what he created because numbers gives us the power to program ourselves, to plan ourselves, to have a strategy. Life is a game of numbers. All of us, when you are entering the world, there is a number that you enter with. There is the date, there is the time, there is the hour, the minute, and even the second. And these are very important details that most of us, we overlook. And um, spiritually, numbers are very, very, very important. There is a reason why you have a firstborn in a family, the reason why you have a lastborn in a family. There is a reason, and uh, when you look at the scriptures, you will understand that numbers are important. When you look at um, the years that Adam lived, the years that Lamech said lived, there is a reason why they are given certain numbers. They lived certain number of years, certain number of months. There is a reason, and this reason, it requires you to be spiritual so that you are able to understand. And so today in this subject, because of what we are going to handle, I want us to look at this number 12. What does it mean, number 12? What does it stand for, number 12? Now, the first thing you understand is this. We have 12 months in a year. There is a reason why the calendar runs 12 months, January to December. Why is it not six months? Why is it not 13? Why is it not 20? 
And why is it not just five months in a year? There is a reason why there are 12 months. And when you read your Bible, you realize that it is, even in the scriptures in the book of Revelation, the tree of life is giving fruits every month for the 12 months. Every month for the 12 months, it is giving fruits. So every month represents a certain season and it adds up to 12. So we have 12 months in a year. When you go back to the book of Genesis, you find that uh, Jacob had 12 sons. Remember, when Jacob and Esau were supposed to be, to be born, God was looking on creating a nation. And uh, he said to Abraham, you will be a father of nations. And Abraham had only, only two sons. He had son with Sarah and he had son with, a, with, a, with his maid. Now, when you look at Ishmael, scripturally, God says to Abraham that I'm going to give Ishmael 12 princes. Genesis chapter 17, in verse number 20, there's something that is very important here. He says, and as for Ishmael, I have heard of you. Behold, I have blessed him. Look at this. This is God speaking to Abraham. He said, as of Ishmael, I have heard you. And he says, I have blessed him. Why did God bless Ishmael? God blessed Ishmael because Ishmael came from Abraham. He says, I have blessed him. And watch this. He says, and I will make him fruitful. I will make him fruitful. God was going to empower Ishmael to become fruitful. I will make him fruitful. And he says, I will multiply him exceedingly. I will multiply him exceedingly. Though Ishmael was not the child of the promise, but God is telling Abraham, inside you, you carry the blessing. And so the blessings that are in you are also going to be in Ishmael. And he says, that's how even God can correct your mistakes. Sometimes you can make mistakes in life. And uh, most of us, we think that after making mistakes in life, all we are waiting for is harshness, uh, frustrations, punishment. But God is telling Abraham, as of Ishmael, I'm going to bless him. I'm going to multiply him. And I will make him fruitful. I know in many, in many Christian circles, we don't like referring to Ishmael. But this is important because there is something that we want to know here from the true nature of God. God is a loving God. God is a caring God. God is a God that is beyond man. That's why the Bible says God is not a man. You see, there is a why God reasons. There is the truth attributes of God that we can get. And this we get from and learn from knowing the scriptures. Look at what God is telling Abraham. He says, as for Ishmael, I'm going to bless him. Behold, open your eyes. Open your spiritual eyes and see that I'm going to bless him. And I'm going to make him fruitful. That means he's going to, 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 to be fruitful. He's going to be productive. He's going to produce good things. And I will multiply him exceedingly, excessively. God is going to cause Ishmael to be multiplied. And you see, let me tell you something. If you want to know you're going to be great, this is what happens if you are able to be multiplied. If you're given the power of multiplication, if you're given the power of fruitfulness, if you are blessed, then you're going to be great. Greatness is birthed by these three things. The first one is blessing. When someone is blessed, it's destined to be great. Secondly, when somebody is fruitful, it's going to be great. Why? It's going to fill his area. It's going to outgrow himself. He's going to reproduce himself. And then God says, I'm going to multiply him. He's not going to add him. He's going to multiply him. And not just multiplying, but also God was going to multiply him exceedingly. And watch this. is very important. The scripture says, he says, 
twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Listen, number twelve represents a nation. You can never produce a nation until you reach number 12. Number 12 represents a nation. God is telling Abraham, I'm going to make Ishmael a great nation. Remember, the promise was on Isaac. But now something is happening here. Ishmael comes in and God speaks to Abraham on the future of Ishmael. Because Abraham is worried. Abraham is worried. At that time, there is a problem in the house of Abraham because now there is a son that has been born by, by a maid that has brought the change of patterns, that has brought the change of relationship inside the homestead of Abraham. But now Abraham is praying to God. And that's why when you are praying, always get to a place where you can hear what God is saying. Many people pray before they hear anything. They have said amen and they leave. Remember, prayer is we communicating to God. But also, faith comes when we hear what God is communicating to us inside our spirit. And the way the relationship between Abraham and God was real, the same way our relationship with God can be that real where God can speak to us. God can speak to you and through his word is able to communicate to you his will. And so here, God is communicating his will unto Abraham and he's telling Abraham, Abraham, there is something that you don't know about Ishmael and this is what I'm about to tell you. Number one, just know Ishmael is blessed. Just know Ishmael is blessed. He may, he, may, he may look like a mistake that you've done in your life. He may look like a, an error that you've done in your life. But I, God, I'm going to step into that mistake. I'm going to step into that error. And I'm going to turn it out to become a miracle. I'm going to turn it out to become something great. And God is telling Abraham that, number one, Ishmael is going to carry a blessing. Number two is going to carry the power of fruitfulness. And number three, Ishmael is going to carry the ability to multiply. And then Ishmael is going to become a great nation. And how is Ishmael going to become a great nation? Because Ishmael is going to give birth to 12 princes. And then Isaac, Isaac now, the child of the promise comes into the scene. And when he comes into the scene, Ishmael, now Isaac has two sons who are twins, Esau and Jacob. Remember, Ishmael goes straight to get 12 princes. And then Isaac has two sons, Esau and Jacob. And then all of us, we know the story. All these children, they grow up. And there is a place whereby they're supposed to be blessed. And they are blessed. And uh, we know Jacob becomes a partaker of the blessing. And when Jacob becomes a partaker of blessing, now Jacob gives birth to 12 sons. Jacob gives birth to 12 children. When you read Genesis chapter number 42, verses 13, the Bible says, and they say, your servants are 12 brethren, the sons of one man, in the land of Canaan, and behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. So, they are talking about their family. 
They are talking about their family. And they say they have 12. So number 12 represents the birth of a nation. Jacob who now becomes a nation of Israel produces 12 sons. And with the 12 sons the nation of Israel is birthed, is put into place. So Israel, before it became a nation, it was a man. He says, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. Twelve sons, one man produces. Listen to me carefully. It is not how you look. It is not how you feel. It is not what people say about you, but it is what you are willing to release from the bowels of the Spirit. It is what God has deposited in you. Sometimes your environment can tell you otherwise. Sometimes your feelings can tell you otherwise. Sometimes your friends can tell you otherwise. But listen to me carefully. It is what God has deposited in your spirit. And today, as I speak to you, one of my prayer and my cries of my heart is that may God deposit a nation in you. May God deposit greatness in you. Number 12 is very important. Ishmael has 12 princes. Jacob has 12 sons. That tells you that Ishmael goes and establishes a nation. And then Isaac comes here and also establishes a nation. Because you can never become a nation until number 12 is fulfilled. You can never become a nation until number 12 is fulfilled. And these are spiritual principles. And remember, principles knows no race. Principles can never be broken. Principles remain for our advantage. And the nation of Israel is created and is founded upon 12 tribes. Upon the 12 tribes, the nation of Israel is founded. And that's why you realize the nation of Israel is strong. Why? Because it is founded on 12 tribes. And then we fast forward. We fast forward and we come to Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Jesus comes into the world and is born in Bethlehem of Judea, raised in Nazareth. And he grows. And in a certain time, he goes to be baptized on River Jordan. And after he's baptized on River Jordan, the Bible tells us that the heavens open and the Spirit of God comes upon him. And the Spirit of God coming upon Jesus was so visible that it is described that they saw the Spirit coming and resting on him. And then Jesus is led into the wilderness and is tempted for 40 days. And after 40 days, the Bible says, and Jesus came back to Nazareth with the power of the Holy Ghost. And then he began to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Begins to preach the gospel of the kingdom. 
And look at what he does. After praying, he then chooses the twelve disciples whom he named apostles. Now ask yourself a question. Why did Jesus choose five disciples? Why did he choose seven or nine? But he chooses twelve carefully, prayerfully. He chooses, he makes a choice of twelve men who are his disciples. Disciples means they are going to learn from him. There is mentees. There is protégés. He's going to release on them the spirit that he carries. He's going to release on them the message that he carries. He's going to release on them the mission and the vision that he carries. And this is the reason why Jesus chose 12. Because Jesus was establishing a nation. He was establishing a kingdom. Jesus was establishing a kingdom. And the reason why he chose 12 men is because he was going to establish a kingdom. And as I told you, the number 12 represents a nation, represents a kingdom. And Jesus speaks many times about the kingdom of God. He talks many, many times about the kingdom of God. And there is something of great importance that I want to show you where Jesus is referring to the kingdom of God. He says in Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 3 in one of his teachings Jesus says verily verily I say unto you except ye be converted and become as little children you shall not enter the kingdom of God now Jesus is so much interested in establishing a kingdom than any other thing and his kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. Now, the reason why he's saying, except you be like, convert and become like children. There is one character about children. Children are eager to learn. They want to know. They want to learn. Children will be asking you questions. Anytime you're aware children are, they're asking you questions. What is this? Why? They are eager to learn. They want to learn. Through that learning, their mind is formed. Their mind, the knowledge base is formed. They are developing. And so, the disciples were supposed to be eager to learn because through that learning, there is growth. Through that learning, there is development. Through that learning, there is what we call increase in stages. And so, Jesus makes a choice of 12 men who are going to be foundations. The foundation of his kingdom. Because he knows what he's doing. He understands what he's doing. He doesn't just make a, 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 a mistake of just having 12 people. No, 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 no. no. He knows what he's doing. In Ephesians, chapter number 2, and verse number 19 and 20, and we read also 21 and 22, watch this very carefully. It says, Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens, with the saints and of the household of God 
Look at this, very important. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. So, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, he, cho he makes a choice of the 12 apostles whereby his kingdom is going to be built upon because Jesus came to bring to us the kingdom of God. He came to bring us, to make us citizens of his nation. Remember when Jesus is born, and the wise men from the east, they came to look for him. And this is the question that they put across. They say, where is he that is born, the king of the Jews? So Jesus was born a king. He was born a king. And the work of the king is to conquer territories. And he was conquering territories through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He was conquering the territories of the hearts of men. And bringing them into his kingdom through the new birth. John 3.3 3 says, no man can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born again. So, when you enter the kingdom of God, you are built upon a foundation that can never be shaken, that can never be moved. And the foundation is Jesus Christ. And on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 20. And verses 21 says, In whom? All the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So Jesus Christ, being the master architect of the kingdom, no wonder his disciples called him master because he had answers for all questions. He had solution to every problem. There is no problem that Jesus cannot solve. I will repeat it again. There is no problem that Jesus cannot solve. There is no disease that Jesus cannot heal. There is no situation that Jesus cannot turn around. There is no storm that Jesus cannot calm. Jesus Christ is master. And being a master architect, he builds his kingdom on a foundation that cannot be shaken, that cannot be destroyed. And he builds his kingdom on a principle of the number 12. And that is why he has the 12 disciples whom he carefully chooses after prayer. The Bible says that he prayed all night. Then in the day, he came and he made the 12 disciples whom he called them apostles. Matthew 16, verses 18. And I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the foundation upon Jesus Christ has built his church which is himself, that foundation cannot be destroyed. It doesn't matter what comes your way. Nothing will destroy you. It doesn't matter what you face. Nothing will destroy you. It doesn't matter what you hear. It doesn't matter what the world is saying. Nothing will destroy you. Because he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail.
against the church shall not prevail against us why we are his kingdom we are his nation and uh, there is something very important i want us to look at in um, uh, first peter first peter chapter number chapter number two first peter chapter number two and verse number nine which is one of my favorite scriptures that describes who we are watch this he says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation watch this we have been we have become a nation a holy nation a peculiar people and this is the reason that you should show far the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Listen to me, brother and sister. Darkness has no power over you. Satan has no power over you. Demons and devils have no power over you. Witch doctors, witchcraft, sorcerers don't have power over you. They don't. In fact, they cannot even reach where you are. You are in Christ. You are in the kingdom of God. They don't have a right over your life. They lack jurisdiction to reach you. Why? Because you are part of the kingdom of God. You are a nation of God. The Bible says you are a city that is built upon a hill. And that city can never be destroyed. Number 12 represents a nation. The birth of a nation. And something that is very important, if we can go back to the book of Genesis, you realize that Joseph had a robe of many colors. We don't know how many colors they were, but I believe there were 12 colors. And these 12 represent the abilities that Joseph carried to deliver the world, to deliver the nation of Israel from hunger and from trouble. He carried these divine abilities. These divine abilities, they are spiritually represented in colors. These divine abilities, they are spiritually represented in colors. And that is why Joseph was recognized by f from far by the robe that he wore. That's how the, his brothers were able to recognize him. And they said, look, the dreamer is coming. Why did, did they recognize that he, it was Joseph? It is because of the robe of many colors that he was wearing. And these colors, I believe, there were 12 colors which represented abilities that were inside of him and that are inside of us, especially if we know how to activate these abilities for our advantage. And something that is very important. Number 12 is number 1 and 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. Jesus was raised on the third day. Jesus stayed on the grave in three days. And on that third day, he rose from the grave. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. Very, very important. Which represented the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God is triune being, Father, Son, and Spirit. You know, and man also is a triune being. He has, man is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in a body. So this number is very significant. I want you to catch me in the next episode, whereby now I'm going to begin to handle one ability after another. There are 12 divine abilities that are in you that you need to discover. When you discover these 12 abilities, let me tell you, you will live in this world with the dominion, with the power and influence. Until we meet again in the next episode, keep living in the atmosphere of possibilities, for with God, all things are possible. Goodbye and God bless you. Of our Lord Jesus, the 
the love of the Father and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abiding with us all the days of our lives and forever.